Um, Megan's my oldest. She's 14. She's a ninth grader. Robbie and Shane and Blake are 12, 10, and 7. Um, and, and I love them. They're great kids. They're, they're very active. We do a lot of things together, especially exercising together. They're just phenomenal. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that. About We were talking a little bit about work-life balance. Now, sure. tell me how in the world, and I know folks, want uh, the students today, how in the world do you run a business, do all this continuing ed, raise four kids, okay? <laughs> talk a little bit about work-life balance. I know it's something it, that you like to talk about to people. I do. I, I enjoy talking about that because it is a challenge, and, and everybody's interested in how you do it all. Um, it's a balance. I, I'm very passionate about dentistry. Obviously, you can mm -hmm. tell I love what I do, but I love my family. And so I, I, my first goal is always to put my priorities in order. And I tell everybody, you can ask any of my children, what are mom's priorities? And they always say, God first, yeah. dad second, us third, dentistry fourth. Right. And those are my priorities, and I keep that focus. Um, I know that I, I need to be in my office. My office demands of me, but if ever my children need me, I'm, my children's first. I tell my team members, family comes first. If you need to be there for kindergarten day, you need to be there for field trip, you need to be there. That's, right. that's important. So I, I cut my patient care hours so that I can be mommy and I can be dentist. Right. Um, but there are a lot more hours to be put in. So there are a lot of times when I put my children to bed at night and I'm on the computer doing business stuff because I need to, right. or I'm reading journal articles because I need to. Right. But it's my passion and I love it, yeah. so I don't mind. And at some point we get a, a little bit of sleep here? Talk to me. <laughs> well, I think sleep's overrated. I really do. I think we could get so much more accomplished if we didn't have to sleep. But yeah, I do have to work those hours in too. Yeah. As one of my buddies said, uh, you have your whole death to sleep. That's you know? exactly right. You can sleep when you die. I feel the same way. So part of this, let's talk a little bit about this activeness with your family. You're, mm -hmm. you're an active person in mm -hmm. general, mm -hmm. but also uh, w w you're involved with a scout group. Mm -hmm. you're, you're involved with some coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about your fitness and you guys, uh, you and your husband both do these triathlons, marathons. So kind of talk a little bit about all that right now. Well, one of the things that I realized a long time ago was I needed some me time. Mm -hmm. I needed some time for me to do something that made me feel good, and that is exercising. And as my children got older, I realized that I can share some of that time with my children, and still it's me time because I'm releasing those endorphins. I still feel great. I'm still physically fit. And so what's happened over time is that our children have gotten involved in the same things that we've gotten involved in. So now they're starting to do triathlons, and they're running races with us. And my, my, my daughter ran a half marathon with me year before last. My son's running a half marathon with me this year. Right. We always run 5Ks together. My, my Little guy, since he was four, has run 5Ks. I mean, it's just, it's, there's something about crossing the finish line with your child yeah. that's just unreal. So we, do a lot, we spend a lot of family time doing things that we love, and it's usually activities that we love. When we go on vacation, we do high-activity vacations. And one of those races was right here in uh, Lumberton. At yes, the, uh, Rumba on the Lumber. Yes, great. Yes. Fantastic. We were glad to have you down for that. And yeah, we enjoyed it. Look forward to having you back. It's great. Uh, also, uh, you're involved in some coaching and some uh, uh, maybe the scout leader. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Well, um, I tell everybody scouting is my other career. Okay. I spend a lot of time with the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts, but again, it's what I love. And uh, one of the things that I enjoy is make, having an impact on younger children, yeah. not only my own children, but younger p children. And scouts allows me to do that. Coaching allows me to do that. I coach cross country, and because I love to run, I get to run and influence children at the same time. And what better, what better way to live your life than to be able to do that? So being able to have an impact in young children's life is just incredible. And, of course, my children are right there with them, so I get right. to spend time with my children doing that too. Now, were you, you, the running and, and uh, uh, sports, were you active as a child in those types of things? Or I did was you play sports active. at Magnolia? Never no? played sports. Okay. No, it's something that I acquired as an adult. Okay. And I think as you get older, you realize how important it is to stay fit and healthy, and, and that's where it came in. And, and I'm glad my children are being raised in such a way that they enjoy yeah. being active because I think it's going to be a big part of our society. And your, your husband was uh, is just as active as you are, it sounds like. Yeah, my husband was actually the leading edge on that one. He was very involved in sports when I met him. And, okay. um, you know, I watched him in a couple of triathlons, and then I said, I can do that. Right. So then I started joining in, and um, then I pushed him into running, you know, marathons. And so we've kind of done things together and, and encouraged each other together. Do you have a marathon or a triathlon coming up this year? We have a half marathon coming up in September, okay. but that's not my big race. I haven't decided on my big race okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and you're back on, uh, back on campus today. You still have family here? I do. Okay. I have lots of family here. My parents still live um, in Saddle Tree. Right. I have lots of aunts and uncles. My grandmother, who's 96, mm -hmm. lives in Saddle Tree. So um, I'll be visiting family this afternoon. Good, good. So, and and uh, 
Are you able to come back uh, often? I know it sounds like when you left uh, for dental school, you kind of made a home and a new life up mm -hmm. in uh, Cary, but you're able to get home occasionally. And well, Robinson County will always be my home, Absolutely. and I love coming back. We always come back for Lumbee Homecoming. Right. That's uh, uh, essential in my family's life, and, right. and my children enjoy that. And then we come back quite a few times throughout the year for other family occasions or just to say hello. And you have a brother or sister, you have other siblings, where are they at? I do. I have a sister who's actually up in Raleigh with me. Oh, okay. And my brother's in Phoenix, and I'm trying to get him to Raleigh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Raleigh's been a nice uh, uh, home for you, and you've been up there in Cary, where it's, you've seen a little bit of growth up there as well, haven't Quite you? Quite a bit of growth in Cary, yes. <laughs> so, um, well, let me, let me go back a little bit to your dental practice about uh, uh, one thing. And, and, uh, if you go to your website, you'll see that Clay Aiken is one of your patients. He is one of my patients. <laughs> tell, tell us about that. Well, Clay Aiken actually <laughs> came to us for a smile makeover. He, he didn't come just as a normal patient. His agent called and said, Clay wants a smile makeover. Can you do it? And because I had been chosen the number one cosmetic dentist in the area, he mm -hmm. decided he wanted me to be his dentist. So he came in, and we were under some pressure because he only had a week before he was going to be on the Jim, Jimmy Kimmel show, and right. he wanted us to go in and do his smile makeover. So we really had to uh, put some big things in order to get it done that quickly because right. normally it takes longer. And um, we sedated him. He chose to be sedated. And uh, one thing I can tell you is that Clay sings in his sleep. <laughs> so he sung through most of the procedure. It was really cool. But he has a beautiful smile now, and it's been really wonderful being part of Clay's um, profession. It's yeah, he, he's a phenomenal guy. Every time he comes to town, he sends me tickets and okay. gives my kids autographed things. He, he's just really a wonderful person. Well, good. That's a yeah. neat story, and we all yeah. know the Clay Aiken story, being from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, I happen to see that again on your website, and there's a little picture of him on uh, uh, on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Yeah. In fact. I think maybe after you had just done the procedure. Uh, it was. It was the day after. We actually delivered his veneers that day. He flew to New York to tape. Uh, and... Um, he mentioned on his show, or Jimmy Kimmel mentioned that right. the Tooth Fairy came to visit him. So <laughs> I was very proud to be the Tooth Fairy, of, <laughs> the Tooth Fairy of Clay Aiken. <laughs> and you talked a little bit about there. Let's talk about some cosmetic things sure. we were talking beforehand. Uh, a lot of folks whiten now. Yes. Which, you know, when we were growing up, that was something you never heard of. You're absolutely right. Extreme Makeover came on ABC, and then uh, The Swan came on The Fox, and all of a sudden there was this overwhelming demand for, for brighter, beautiful teeth. Yeah. And so people want their teeth whitened now, and it's almost uh, an accepted thing that it's going to be done. Yeah. I mean, young kids are doing it. Older people are doing it. Everybody wants a brighter, whiter smile. And why not? Right, absolutely. Yeah, we, we feel good when we can smile. We feel good. And when yeah. people smile at you, you feel good. So why not brighten your smile so you feel better about smiling? Right. And, and not only whitening, but you said veneers. and Veneers. I, I tell everybody, one of the things that is so great about cosmetic dentistry is it allows you the opportunity to change people's lives. Mm -hmm. And people come in and they've, they've felt bad about their teeth all their life. They've wanted to smile all their life. They've been ashamed of their teeth. There are many different stories yeah. there. But, you know, you're, God has given me the opportunity to be able to change these people's lives by giving them a beautiful smile. And they become different people. They yeah. let their hair down. They do their makeup different. They change their careers. It's amazing. And I, I always say my greatest gift to this world when I die will be leaving behind beautiful smiles. Yeah. And that makes me feel good. Yeah, that's good. You know, yeah. you make a great point. Smiling is the international language. Yes, it know? is. Yes. <laughs> and you're, you're, so, you're so true. When, when I smile, you smile both. Right. We got about uh, less than a minute left. I want to close out with this. Tell me a little bit about some snow in your backyard when, when uh, there was no snow out. Well, this year we decided we were going to buy our children a snowmaking machine <laughs> for Christmas. And obviously this Christmas was a warm Christmas, so about two days before Christmas it was going to be cold enough to blow snow. So we decided, let's set it up now and blow snow. So we set it up at night. We started blowing the snow, and <laughs> kids were inside, and they wanted to know what's going on. They knew there was some excitement. and So about 11 o'clock that night we let them come out. All the neighborhood kids came out, and everybody was able to sled down the hill beside our house because we have a snow blowing machine and it was a big deal the next day we probably have 40 children in our yard sledding down the hill the news uh people came out and did news stories on it and it was white you know a white christmas for our children and we've been able to blow snow on cold nights and all the neighborhood kids come over and people drive by it is the coolest thing today we have gone through um i think we said 12 dozen um cups of hot chocolate and who knows how many homemade <laughs> chocolate chip cookies? Well, I look forward to coming there. We got 10 seconds. Bobby, yeah. thanks for being here today. Thank you. Glad I to have you back it. on campus. Thank you. Folks, we'll see you next time on USC Pick Conversations. Thanks for joining us.